head over to one of my favorite analysts and journalists. He's based out there in Islamabad, in Pakistan. Javid, good to see you, sir. Thanks for joining us here on A News. You and I talked about this very subject just a few days ago, you may remember, on front page. What's the latest? Is, is Imran Khan really on his way out? It appears that he's, he's on his way out on April 3rd. Uh, probably there will be voting um, on whether or not Prime Minister is going to stay in power. Uh, likelihood is that he's going to be ousted. Uh, the opposition parties have managed to uh, switch, managed to win over the loyalties of many of his MPs. At least, I think, more than two, 20 MPs have been won over by the opposition parties. And apart from that, most of the allies parties, they have also withdrawn their support. Now, Prime Minister Imran Khan, uh, he's a hugely relying upon the document which clearly suggests that the that the foreign uh, uh, country which is usa i know as, a, as a for sure uh, is threatening pakistan that in case the prime minister Imran khan remains in power uh, that would not abort well for pakistan and in case this no confidence motion it, it turns out to be successful uh, that would abort well for pakistan so uh, those threats have been reported by pakistan's uh, ambassador to Washington, uh, this, these threats are based on, on of, of a conversation between Pakistan's ambassador to Washington and the uh, U.S. Secretary, uh, under, US Undersecretary of State for South Asia. So let's see how things unfold. But it appears now in Pakistan, the, uh, what uh, the Prime Minister Imran Khan has managed to build up a narrative that these opposition parties are what he calls, they are the stooge of the U.S., also in the context that uh, the P Pakistan People's Party and Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, uh, both, are the, both are the mainstream opposition parties, they have the credentials of being pro-US, and uh, two of them, both of them, they had the scandals in the past, and uh, Pakistan People's Party had a scandal that it wanted American military uh, footprint in Pakistan when the American troops were inside Afghanistan, and in return, it was ready to uh, basically freeze Pakistan's nuclear program. And similarly, uh, Nawaz Sharif, the former prime minister, also projected himself as a, as a pro-US by, by leaking a very key information that the military is uh, promoting uh, what he called jihad uh, in the region. So I think in that context, Prime Minister Imran Khan is projecting himself that he is the one who stands for the sovereignty of Pakistan, and he is the one who, who is not ready to become what he calls a slave of the Americans. OK. I mean, is there any chance he can claw this back? Or is he definitely? I mean, you said he, he could be out. He, the, the parliament have voted sort of... Is there any way that he can... OK, two questions, two-part question. Any, any chance he can get back in? Part two, if he is out, what's the next immediate step for the parliament? I think uh, apparently it is a miracle which can save him. But there are two things which are uh, we need to keep an eye on. Uh, first, the China today has come up with a statement very in an unusual manner and saying that the uh, there should not be cold war, the country should not be pushed to any particular bloc. That is an indication that Pakistan's prime minister has been saying that he's just trying to pursue a foreign policy. He had a visit to Russia and he wants to have an independent foreign policy, something Americans don't like, uh, because this is a country where the political leaders have a history of supporting Americans for all their wrongdoings, uh, particularly in Afghanistan. And I think uh, this statement may have some effects on Pakistan's military leadership. And today there was a national security meeting also where this letter was also shared. And similarly, Saudis also wants Pakistan prime minister to stay in power because Saudis have now changed their direction. They are, they are now heading towards China, China and, and, and the Russia. In that context, Saudi Arabia certainly wants a prime minister who is a more pro-China uh, pro and a less, uh, less uh, pro, to the, to, to, pro to the West. So I think, but again, these are kind of the factors which I don't think is going to be registered with Pakistan's military, which has been calling shots. And many analysts here in believe that it is the military uh, which has actually, in a very tested manner, has created conditions whereby the opposition parties has managed to win over the sympathies and the vote 
of the ruling party and remember these MPs in Pakistan, they are the migratory birds. They, are, they move from one party to another party. Allegedly, whenever their palms are geesed or uh, whenever their political interests are served by the other party. And generally, in the past, they have been listening to the military very much. This time around, military says it is a neutral. They, they are not asking them to switch over to the opposition. But certainly, the military has created condition where opposition has exploited the situation in its favor. Apparently, it is a China-US uh, Cold War, uh, and Pakistan is being sandwiched in between two countries. Uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan uh, obviously seems to have a, an independent foreign policy in a country where 80,000 people were killed in American war against terror, and uh, he has managed to stoke anti-American sentiments. Another, I think, uh, Trump card, which may I may not call it a Trump card, but again, the ruling party's members are saying that, he has also threatened with another massive rally in Islamabad on a day when the no confidence motion is going to be moved. So it is a kind of a very tense situation. Prime Minister Imran Khan is known to be fearless uh, political leader. And some people are apprehending that he could possibly sack the military chief. Let's hope that doesn't happen because in the past there was a similar situation and the army militarily intervened in 1999. But I don't think he's going to do that. But certainly the, that possibility can also cannot be ruled out uh, because there, uh, there are reports suggesting that perhaps some of the military generals who are calling short, they are pro-Americans. Uh, that may be a kind of a reason in the mind of uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan, but and I don't think the uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan can resolve to that kind of situation. Okay, we're interested to see what happens. Let me ask you one last question. Try and uh, if you, I appreciate a quick, short answer. I know you. I love listening to you. Very insightful. And I really appreciate that. But the minutes next Wednesday is it next? It's next Wednesday that, that the vote comes in and Imran Khan is uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan is ousted. What's the immediate thing that happens next? I think uh, in that scenario, Shabash Sharif, uh, who's the opposition leader, he's going to be the next pri prime minister. He's a man who's being prosecuted on, the, on corruption charges, and there is a very good amount of evidence on how he has smuggled out dollars from Pakistan and tried to legalize uh, black money. Uh, the man is at the heart of the allegations. Uh, I think in that kind of situation, Prime Minister Imran Khan is known to be building up good, uh, good anti-opposition narrative in the past. And I think Prime Minister Imran Khan is going to, uh, going to strike back. And in a country uh, where there is already anti-American uh, sentiments, he's going to uh, stoke that anti-American se sentiments. And this is very rare in Pakistan's history that a, a sitting prime minister would make such a hue and cry of, of pursuing a foreign, independent foreign policy, and he would he would talk against the West in a manner that no one has done in the past, uh, apart from Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, uh, who was the prime minister in the late 70s. And very, very imp importantly, you may recall, he has the, he's the one who refused to provide American military bases uh, after they left from Afghanistan. Uh, that has not gone then gone gone well with the americans and similarly he refused to meet cia chief he refused to meet uh, us under secretary of state in the past i think he is a kind of giving a, a posturing which should be the case for an independent leader in pakistan and this is something Americans don't like. They want complete loyalty of Pakistan. And no situation, by the way, is fast changing. Gone are the days when Pakistani, Pakistan used to listen to Americans. Bran Khan is going to come out with a kind of a campaigns probably Americans would not have heard, heard of. This means more anti-Americanism in Pakistan. This means more anti-Westernism in, in, in this part of the world. So uh, coming days and weeks are, don't uh, bode well for the opposition parties because they, because they are already tarnished with the corruption charges. And now prime minister is going, going, going to build up a narrative that they are the slave and the stooge of the Americans. Indeed, Joe. Let's see how that pans out. You and I will be talking again soon, I'm sure. Thanks so much for your time, Joe. Always good to see you, sir. Take care. Stay safe.
the growing tide of anti-Israel sentiments. What you see behind me is just tip of the iceberg of what is happening in the country. More than half of $52 billion black CIA budget is spent on espionage network in Pakistan. How would you handle it? The US uh, has looked upon Pakistan as an ally at one point and then uh, as an enemy at the same time. That is going to be the first legal reason on the basis of which he is going to be instantly ousted by the Supreme Court of Pakistan. Joining us live, uh, Javed Rana, who's an expert on politics and geostrategic issues. In the world politics, which is not being driven by any moral principle, it is being driven by the hard geostrategic realities. In a broader picture, more countries would aspire to have nuclear weapons.